Have you ever met anybody that picks and chooses their faith, what they want to what they want to live by, what they want to live in, what they want to take as truth. Have you ever met anybody like that? We live in a picky, choosy world today. We want to tailor make our faith. And I just want you to know this morning that if, if, if you've heard the name Jesus and you, if you've said the name Jesus and you say, I believe in Jesus, that he's the son of the living God, um, we still have free will, we still have a choice, but it should be very clear to us that, that he wants us all, and, and, and he cares deeply about every aspect of our life. And, and so when we approach our faith as if we can tailor make it to what we want, we're sadly mistaken as to what this is all about. And so the reason why I'm setting us up that way is because I believe that there are some, I don't have any percentages, and so I'm just going to be safe and say that some have approached the conversation of the power of the Holy Spirit as if it's an optional in their faith, and it's just not. There is a way about our life that, that Jesus has in mind for us to live, and it's that that exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can ask or imagine, um, that, that life where he says, I've come to give life and life abundantly, that thread of conversation and that lifestyle can only be lived through and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are a Pentecostal church. Y'all could, if there's something that you agree with, you'll be like, okay, yeah, amen. That's right. That's right. We're going to do something a little bit different today where we, well, I guess it's not much different at all. We kind of did the same thing last week. We're going to, we're going to go through the Gospels. But there's something, I, I just love this, this relationship with Christ, and I love getting into the Word, and I love how it speaks, and I love that it's, it never gets old and crusty and dusty. There's something that, that struck me in this, this um this flow of conversation about the Holy Spirit that um, I, sadly, I've just glossed over for most of my life. Go ahead and start turning to Acts chapter 1. We're going to pick up where Jesus is obviously risen, and we have this, this book of Acts that's written by Luke, and It starts very powerfully. And I have approached verses 1 through 3 as just this introduction, but there's something so powerful in this that I'm kind of embarrassed that I've missed it for so long. I've missed the significance of what's being said here. So we're going to read this, and then we're going to go through the Gospels, and then we're going to We're going to let the Holy Spirit speak to us on how we need to live our life. Acts chapter 1. I wrote the first narrative, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up. After he had given orders through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after he had suffered, he also presented himself to alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. That's all we're going to read out of Acts for today. Something that, obviously we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're having this conversation about the power of the Holy Spirit, dunamis. But sometimes there's a, there's a section or there's a phrase that just jumps out and I don't even mind if you mark up the Bible that belongs to the church. You can mark it up and then take it home with you, okay? If you just haven't brought one before, it's yours today, okay? But grab a pen and underline or highlight after he had given orders through the Holy Spirit. Given orders through the Holy Spirit. Orders through the Holy Spirit. Those are the Three stopping points for us this morning. Orders through 
the Holy Spirit. Now, it may not mean much to us at face value, but there's, there's incredible significance to those three words, orders through the Holy Spirit. Just, just to make sure that you are with me, can you all say orders through the Holy Spirit? All right, great job. Y'all sound like church. Okay. <laughs> orders through the Holy Spirit. Orders is this. It's a command to be done. Enjoin or strongly encourage to do something. We get this, right? When we understand orders, we go through the drive through and we give them our order. Uh, depending on what kind of home you were raised in, you, you might have come from a home that was very eclectic and disoriented, or you might have come from a home that's very orderly. You have orders, right? Um, so order makes sense. We, we get it. It's a command. You do it. And join takes it up a little bit. Like command is strong, but enjoin is a legal term from my understanding and based on what I researched. I've never used the word enjoin. Um, I didn't even know what it meant, but enjoin is, it's a strong, strong, strong recommendation. And if you don't do that, there are going to be repercussions. And so it's still a choice, but it's a little bit more than, do you, wanna, do you choose a red shirt or a green shirt? I command you to choose a shirt. It's a little bit more detrimental than, than that light of a conversation. This is, these are orders. How crazy is it? How many of you have never thought about your relationship with Christ in that way? Because Jesus, he, he went out and he gathered these 12 guys, right? And they were called his disciples, his followers. And in that three-year period, he was pouring into them, but then he would also send them out with instructions. Now, he didn't say do this or die, but he, he did say go and do these things. They were commands. They, they were marching orders. I probably, I, I can't sing the song, but even within four square, the four square gospel, there was March on Christian Soldiers. Anybody remember that song? I won't sing it because I don't even know the melody. I just know it's a title. Y'all are starting to hum it now. Um, but there, there was a, there was a, there were orders. Go and spread the gospel, right? Orders. I don't know that we approach, I don't know that our, our generation or our day approaches Christ that way. We want to feel better. We want to feel at ease about where we're going to spend eternity, but then it might stop there. Y'all, I, I want to just let y'all know this morning that once you say yes to Jesus, there are orders. There are marching orders. Now, don't get all like, I, I, that's not what I signed up for. I signed up for the feel goods. You won't feel any better than when you are marching to his orders. I promise you. You want to have life and life abundantly? Do what he says to do. Don't Give yourself away to the, the stuff that's out there. Man, I could go on so many rabbit trails of, of, of how we live our life that is so polar opposite of the order that he wants to bring to our life. I have no other God before me. I mean, we could get all Ten Commandments up in here. Jesus fulfilled, he was a, it was a fulfillment of those words. Jesus was. We're still supposed to strive to live by them, understanding that we will never fully hit the mark, which is why he came and did what he did. It, but just because he died on the cross and was raised again three days later doesn't mean that we just have a free-for-all in the way that we want to live. It's simply because we say yes to Jesus. There are orders. There are commands. He is calling us to and join into really this kingdom work. Strongly encourage. He's strongly encouraging us to do something. 
We'll get to it in a minute. That's where we're going to go through the Gospels. He gave them orders. What was the next word? Through. What was the next word? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Not, not Holy Spirit. We're not there yet. He gave them orders. Okay, you're, all, you're getting there. He gave them orders. We're, we're almost there. He gave them orders. Thank you. Okay. Through. I thought this was so interesting that this Greek word, in my research, normally there's like a paragraph like yay big on a word. The word through was like pages. So I was like, okay, hold up a second. There's something significant here about through. He gave orders through the Holy Spirit. Why so much detail? Why is there a need for so much detail as to through, going through something. Y'all did a whole lot of going through just this morning. All of y'all are wearing shirts. Your arms went through your sleeve holes to go to the bathroom, depending on what your setup is. Maybe you have it all opened up to your bedroom and bath. I don't know, but I have a door that goes to mine, and I went through our bathroom door. I brush my teeth and the toothpaste goes through the opening of the toothpaste bottle. Simple stuff, y'all, but hang with me. I love life cereal, cinnamon flavor. I went through it all. (laughs) All right, I feel that's a little too safe. Um, We had break and bake cookie dough and I did not bake them because I went through all the dough. (laughs) I feel so much better. (laughs) I hope that didn't prohibit anybody from being healed earlier because of my, (laughs) anyways. Through, y'all came through those doors. You came through two sets of doors to come in here. Anybody wearing pants, your legs went through the pants. You got a belt, your belt went through the loops through is all around us and it's it's such a significant thing but hold up here jesus gave orders through the holy spirit we'll get the holy spirit in a second how great i mean jesus is the son of the living god and yet his orders still needed to be given through the holy spirit so um i did not test this i don't even know if this is going to work or not Got to love those, right? But I want to show you the Holy Spirit. I would use this side, but it's frozen. (laughs) This is the Holy Spirit. Now, Some of y'all are broaching the conversation of the power of the Holy Spirit as impossible as I am looking at this going through there. Yeah I, yeah, I see people getting really animated and really passionate about God and they talk about the Holy Spirit, but I'm just, I just don't see how I can get there. I just, it just doesn't fit for me. Rather, instead of wording it that way, maybe it's, it, it's you've, you've made it too difficult in your thinking that you, you just can't fit there. You, you don't fit in the conversation. I, I want to encourage you that, that G, Jesus went through so much verbiage, to, and I explained this last week, he was so excited to be with his creation, and yet at the end of his life, he's saying, man, y'all, I've, I've loved this time, but I'm going somewhere that you can't go, and I need to do that so that I can give more of myself out. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit. All Gospels, all Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they all go to these, he goes to these details of, I've got to go so I can send. I'm going to exhaust this, by the way. Through. 
is so significant, most of us are unwilling to go through what's required to have the Holy Spirit go through us. Because the first stop is pride. I I just want my faith to be more polished and predictable, and so I'm going to say yes to Jesus, knowing that I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit, but as far as the rest of this Holy Spirit move, this Pentecostal whatever, I just... It's too risky to my ego and pride. I don't mean to be crass about it, but I'm going to get all Mr. T up in here and be like, I pity the fool (laughs) that thinks that way. Those young people that don't get that, that just shows my age, okay? I get it. (laughs) Through. (laughs) I'm trying to make myself small. In order, to go, in order to go through something, what does that require? Don't get too, complica- too, too complex here. What, what's required? Huh? A- action. But where, where do I have to go? Sim- Two-letter word. In. Can I, can I speak something around the Holy Spirit? Okay. You know, do you know people? Do you know people do the Christians do this? What I just did, they they have a good word, but because it's not through the Holy Spirit, it's 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 filtered through humanity. Okay, I'm not going to delay any longer. I'm not diving, by the way. Some of you are like, go for it. Okay. Through. He gave orders through the Holy Spirit. So, um, real quick, the Holy Spirit is co eternal with the Father and the Son. So, Go ahead and throw Holy Spirit up there real quick. Co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and Son, never referred to as a depersonalized force. Okay? So, Jesus gave orders. Jesus gave orders through the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, what's the significance of this? So, if if the Holy Spirit is co-equal and co-eternal, that means that the words that Jesus spoke through the Holy Spirit, that means that they were saturated in the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. That means that His Word, this is really important, y'all, the words that he spoke were eternal. So what he spoke over the disciples and his listeners has eternal significance, which that alone explains why we can't pick and choose what we want in our faith, because his word stands forever. And so he... He spoke, he gave orders through the Holy Spirit. Let us be reminded that after he was water baptized, the Holy Spirit came on him, and immediately the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he was out there for 40 days, 40 nights without food. Does anybody want to sign up for that spirit-empowered life where immediately you are sent into obscurity to be tempted? But wait a minute, I thought that was life and life abundant. 
See, I think that's where we come back to even again that many of us don't want to do what Jesus went through. And y'all, he makes it super easy for us. I'm, he says, I'm going to leave so that I can pour out my spirit. We still have to seek him. And this is another message for another time. But those followers in that upper room, that's what they were doing. Coincidentally, they were up there for 40 days. or Well, they were up there for a long time obeying his order to just don't leave the city until you are empowered. So it still requires of us a heart that wants to pursue Christ. And we, we, we should want all that he has for us. And when we get to that place where with everything that we have, we are pursuing him and all that he has for us, I will pour out my spirit on them. And then from them will flow rivers of living water. So then, our life will be lived through the Holy Spirit. I don't know how else to get out of here other than like this. Okay. So then, on this side, it, it, I don't even know that we get to this point. I think this is heaven. So we, and I'm okay with this looking weird because I think this is how eloquent the church looks, being spirit-filled sometimes. We do our best, but I'm going to walk around speaking through the Holy Spirit the best I can. And I'm going to try to speak truth with grace, like saturated with grace. I'm going to speak truth in such a way that it draws heart to our dad in heaven. See, um, my hope would be that the words that I even say, if we're to be like Christ, and he spoke words through the Holy Spirit, that means that I have that same capacity. And so the words that I say are full of life and promise and power, not because they're my words, but because I've spoken them through this co-equal, co-eternal filter. That requires me to go in, though. I can't go around the Holy Spirit. If I want to live this life that I see written about in the Bible and I see other people living, guess what they've done? Anybody, does anybody's faith compel you to live out your faith more strongly, more closely to Him, more intimately with Him, more convinced of the truth of who He is? Do you have anybody that lives that type of a faith? I guarantee you this, that they are living in and through the Holy Spirit where they are inviting Actually, they're receiving the ongoing invitation to be in His presence. That's why we're passionate about helping this body of believers be passionate about the Word and not just reading as a textbook, but reading it as actual Jesus' voice into your heart so that the Word transforms your life. And then people take notice of your transformed life that is only being transformed by the power and the presence of God through His Word. And people begin to take notice. It's not you. You're not that good. I'm not that good. That's called living and speaking and breathing and doing through the Holy Spirit. Now, I just botched my time Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They all say it a little bit differently. Three of the four document Jesus' last words when he's speaking to them 
through the Holy Spirit, go, I've sent you. That's the only way that we can read the Gospel of Mark when he says you're going to pick up serpents and they're not going to harm you. You're going to drink poison, it's not going to harm you. You're going to pray for the sick and they're going to be healed. Um, you're going to speak and you're going to be able to drive out demons. You're not, you won't do that, but by my Spirit, you will do those things. That's the significance of a dunamis life, of a Spirit-filled, Spirit-empowered life, y'all. And we've all been given orders. Once you say yes to Jesus, your life is not your own. It is no longer I who live, but He that lives in me. So, this morning, grab your connection card. This is what we do at Family Fellowship. We have this thing called a connection card. On the back side of it, there's a question to help process what we've listened to. What has He ordered you to do? What are your orders that He has given you? I'm going to give a few minutes on this one because you might need to, some time to marinate on that question. But I want to invite you to, to ask that question over and over and over again. What have you ordered me to do? What are your spirit-led, spirit-spoken orders for my life? That's the guts of your life. You might want to make a duplicate copy of this because what you're about to write down is paramount to the way that you live your life. 